Hello class, this is a video tutorial on trigonometric equations part 2. In this video we'll be looking at compound angles and further domains. When solving trig equations, the boundaries of the, do of the domain are taken into consideration as more solutions may exist within them. Further consideration is made when working with compound angles. I've highlighted here what compound angles might mean. What it, well, in essence, what it is, is when we have the trig function, the angle that we are working with has been adjusted. In cases such as, such as these, the domain is adjusted according to the compound angle. So let's just get straight into some, um, um, some examples to make sense out of all of this. Well, before we ever try and solve this, we need to first take into consideration the domain. Because the angle is now uh, x plus 30, so uh, I'll, just, I'll just demonstrate to you what happens. If we have x, so normally our domain is x between 360 less than 0, taken straight from here. But now we have x plus 30. If we added 30 to our domain here, we need to add um, 30 to both sides of our equation. So our new domain, we're looking at between 30 degrees and 390 degrees. And now the rest is as follows. From here we take sine x plus 30 equals half and we still do the exact same where we take the inverse of both sides so if we take the inverse of the left hand side we uh, all that's remaining is x plus 30 equals the sine inverse of half sine inverse of half is actually 30 degrees. But once again, because we need to take into consideration between um, 30 degrees and 390 degrees, let's take a look at this in our unit circle quadrants. So, 30 degrees is here, and that is a valid solution because it's within our boundary. If we draw it here as well, of 30 degrees, this angle is a solution. So in this case, um, that's going to be 180, take away 30. 150 degrees is also a solution. Now here's one where it'll be slightly tricky. If we take into consideration a full revolution plus 30 more degrees, so this is now, so this angle in purple is 30 degrees. That will still give us one half, but a full revolution plus uh, 30 degrees is still within our boundary. So 390 is another solution part of this, um, of this equation. So we have three possible solutions here. Now let's take a look. Because our compound angle is x plus 30, we need to solve for x. And what we do now is we subtract 30 from this left hand side, but now we subtract 30 for all of these, which will give us these three solutions, x equals zero degrees, uh, oops, not 150, 120 degrees, and 360 degrees. And just to prove this point, let's take a look. If we do sine of 0, one of the solutions, plus 30, 
then if we do sine of 120, another solution, plus 30, make sure that's right, and then sine of 360, of the third solution, plus 30 from the equation, these three answers should give us half. Oop, oop, that came out as 50, that should be 30. And there we go, all three solutions gave me half. Not only that, the solution 0, 120, and 360 are still within the original, the original domain that we've been given. Okay, so I hope that made some sense using that example. Let's try another example here. Let me move everything across to make some space. Here we go. Let's try it again. Now, first, let's take into consideration our domain because we have a compound angle. So normally, our domain is x is less than 360. It's greater than 0. Now, um, if you're wondering, it's not always going to be this domain, just that this particular question, our domain has been given as 0 to 360. Now, because the compound angle is 2x, our new domain is actually between 720 and, well, still 0. So we doubled both sides. So we need to check all solutions between 0 and 720. Here we go. So let's write the equation. 2 cosine 2x equals root 2. Dividing both sides by 2, we get cosine 2x equals root 2 on 2. And now we're going to take the inverse of both sides, leaving us with 2x equals cosine inverse root 2 on 2. So cosine inverse root 2 on 2, that is 45 degrees. So 2x equals 45 degrees. That is one solution in the positive first quadrant. So here. Now recall, we need to check for all solutions between 0 and 720 degrees, but only positive answers. So we don't need to take into consideration the second quadrant or the third quadrant. But we need to know what this angle is here, this 45 degrees. Now. Once again, we need to check what that answer is in purple. Well, that's going to be 360 minus 45, which I believe is 315. Five, four, yep. But now, that's only between 0 and 360. We need to check right up until 720. So, leaving these, these two here. So, that's 45. 315, we now need to check this angle that I'm about to draw, one full revolution plus 45 degrees. So really that's going to be 45 plus 360. I believe that's uh, not even going to try. 45 plus 360, it's 405. That's still within the boundary. And also if we continue this uh, drawing, we also need this angle, but like so, one full revolution plus that angle again. Well, that is almost um, a, that's almost two, two um, revolutions, but really it's going to be this angle plus another revolution, so 315 plus 360, that 675 is another answer. 
and that would be our last answer because anything greater than that is going to be greater than, than 720. Okay, let's just check these answers and take a look at what will happen. So if we if we input, oh, oh no, sorry, sorry, I nearly, nearly forgot. We're not quite done because this is 2x is equal to these answers. We only want x by itself, so we're going to halve everything here. I'm just going to leave these as fractions, 45 on 2, 315 on 2, 405 on 2, and 6, 675 on 2. So these are our four answers. You can go ahead and test these and substitute them into um, this value here. And those answers should give you root 2 on 2. Let's do one more example. Uh, that's not going to... Oh, I'm just going to move this down here. There we go. One last time. Once again, our original domain is between 0 and 360. Let's let's um, put that in. X is less than 360, but greater than 0. But now, because we're going to halve it first, so x is less than 180, and well, half of half of 0 is 0. And now we're going to subtract 50 from this. So half x minus 50. Our new domain is between 130 and negative 50 degrees. So let's check for those answers. So we're going to have tan of half x minus 50 equals 1. We take the inverse of both sides and this will give us, whoops, come on calculator, there we go, inverse tan of 1 is 45 degrees. And that's just in the first quadrant. Okay, we need it also to be positive. So we only want positive one. So normally we could do it here, that's positive one. And we could do it in this angle here, where that's 45. And the angle we would measure is that angle in purple. However, that is not within the boundary of negative 50 to 130 because this angle here would be larger than 180. So we would exclude that. And I believe this is the only answer that we have. But now for this, we need to solve for x. So I'm going to add 50 on both sides giving us half x equals 95 and x equals uh, 95 times 2 is 190 degrees. And to check this, you would substitute 190 back into our original equation and it should give us 1. So I'll do this for you. Let's take a look tan of half times 190 minus 50 so all of this should equal to 1 so we've done our work correctly so I hope that gave you an insight into solving trigonometric equations with compound angles hope to see you in the next video best of luck